to monitor. So the, the aim of this presentation is trying to explain the rationale that, uh, that we used in order to define the eligibility criteria of the main condition of interest for the spring trial. That is a condition taking into account at the same time physical frailty and sarcopenia. So this is the disclosure of my potential conflict of interest. Uh, so we know that even if everyone agrees about the uh, theoretical concept of frailty that has been described in, in this recent JAMDA uh, consensus paper, um, no one agrees about which is the best tool to operationalize the frailty condition. I've used this uh, paper rather than other consensus paper because in this, uh, among the authors of this, uh, of this document, there are, are represented the two main school of thought. There is Linda Fried and, and Kenneth Rock that signed the, 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 this document. So we can uh, think that this is the standard definition for uh, describing the theoretical background of frailty. Nevertheless, the translation is still very far to be accepted universally. On the other hand, we have sarcopenia that is following a similar uh, trend. I mean, everyone knows what is a sarcopenia. Everyone agrees that the description that Irwin Rosenberg presented also yesterday uh, proposed uh, in 1997. But again, the definition of sarcopenia is again something uh, very hard to translate into the clinical practice. We have different consensus papers and we have different operationalizations. Every time that we change the operationalization, of course, we are changing the target population. We are defining a different risk profile, so there is an issue in the standardization of the assessment and in the uh, possible intervention. Putting together frailty and sarcopenia is not so novel because if we look in literature, and this is the, the well-known vicious cycle uh, described by Linda Fried as a model of, of, of frailty, we find out that frailty and sarcopenia are present. I mean, sarcopenia is part of this vicious cycle. So we are not really inventing something new. Frailty and sarcopenia are two very nested conditions. The problem is all the, the other things that are uh, associated with each of these conditions. And for this reason, we have recently proposed to uh, focus on what is the real core of physical frailty and the real core of sarcopenia, because they share commonalities. And so in order to advance in this, in, in this field, it might be important to identify a, a very organ-specific condition, trying to centralize the, 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 the practical translation to one very specific uh, dimension, and to this, developing the, uh, the operational definition. So, what we did was to uh, identify three different classes of the health status, from homelessness to disability, having frailty as the middle class. And in order to uh, define the thresholds between these three sta stages, we, we have tried, we have started looking at literature, having a strong background on which pose uh, our uh, hypothesis and our proposal. First of all, we had a life study as a model to, to, to follow, uh, with a huge background that was starting even before with the, the life pilot and with a methodology that was accepted and, and demonstrated its efficiency. And so we defined disability, the first step, the, f the first threshold between, I'm sorry. Oh, it's good. Okay, first of all, we wanted to define the distraction between frailty and disability. It was very easy because we had the model of the life study. So 
what we used was the 400 milliwatt test for different reasons. Uh, first of all, because the 400 milliwatt test defines a condition of physical disability that is very early in the disabling cascade. It's occurring very early in the disabling cascade. So it is really a limit between the physical impairment and something more. And on the other hand, it's also, it is also a measure of the capacity of functioning of the, of the individual. It is associated with the idea, idea, but it is also a measure of the capacity of the person to uh, act, to interact with his own environment. And also the results of this test are very similar if compared with the other more stressing tests as the six minute work test. It is different from these other tests because it does not stress the aerobic capacity of the person, but it's just focusing on the capacity or not to accomplish the task. And this is something that is very important because uh, besides of the ambiguities that, that always exist in this field, this is a dichotomous variable. I mean, the 400 meter work test is the, the defining the presence or absence of a certain condition. We are not talking about the gate speed to uh, completing the task, but we are just looking at the capacity or failure of conducting the 400 meter work test. So, having a dichotomous outcome really indicates a condition and uh, allows us to start putting the line uh, between frailty and sarcopenia. And as I mentioned before, we have different definitions of sarcopenia, largely coming from consensus papers, but when we were defining the lines in this uh, pattern between robustness and disability, the, we were lucky enough to have the, um, really the, the results of the FNIH initiative of the Sarcopenia project released in Journal of Gerontology that were uh, considered by the consortium as the gold standard for it. Because differently from all the other previous consensus papers that were consensus paper recommendations uh, provided by experts, the FNIH provided definitions of sarcopenia based upon on the, the lean mass uh, uh, deficiency uh, based on data uh, and analysis of large uh, study goals. So we choose to, to, to follow the, the recommendation of the FNIH to define the sarcopenia condition. So what we did was to include mobility, disability, and the presence of sarcopenia as the threshold defining this condition. And this condition identifies the persons that are disabled, for which the prevention with the lifestyle modification might not be the priority, because here we are in the field of, of treatment. The other line that we completed was between freight and robustness. This was uh, again, a, a, a huge discussion, and we uh, define the, the as tool to define the physical frailty. We use the, the SPVB. The SPVB has been mentioned several times. Everyone knows what is the SPVB. The three subtasks: balance test, gait speed, and uh, chair stand test. Uh, translating physical frailty with gait with, with SPVB means centering the definition on a physical domain, on a specific core, the skeletal, skeletal muscle, and also benefiting from the huge amount of evidence from, uh, coming from literature on this test. Because, after all, this is the test that was one of the first developed for uh, measuring physical function. So, uh, it, we, we, were, we thought that this was the most robust way for defining the physical impairment. It, there was the issue about which are the threshold, because the SPPB is a score ranging from 0 to 12, where 0 is complete inability to perform the test, and 12 represents the best performance. Uh, uh, here, the definition uh, of the threshold was, was quite debated, because every time that we put a line, we, uh, we somehow we, we, we do a, a, an arbitrary decision that is changing life of persons. Uh, and so uh, the, the 
besides of the ethical issues of all this, there are also methodological considerations uh, uh, that are needed. Uh, again, looking at, in, uh, in the literature, we had the model of the life study that was recruiting persons with an SPPB lower than nine. So that could be the, the ideal um, cut point for identifying the absence or presence of physical frailty. Uh, and this was also su supported by a, a, a relatively recent study in general gerontology in which persons with 10, 11, 12 at the SPPB are very unlikely to uh, fail the 400 meter walk test. Looking on at the other side of this uh, analysis of these results coming from the Inchianti study, we define the low threshold of the SPPB with the score of three, because a person with three still has somehow the capacity of the possibility to complete the 400 meter walk test, whereas persons that have zero, one or two at the SPPB are very, very unlikely, at least it is impossible for them to complete the task. So we said we can set the, the range between, for the SPPB, for the physical uh, frame between three and nine, so that this is the operationalization that we used for defining the uh, physical freight and sarcopenia condition in, 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 in life. In, in, in. This is really providing the middle class of the population, of, of the older population, that can be defined as freight in the presence of sarcopenia and the population that may most benefit from prevention intervention because we are excluding the roads, so avoiding the problem of a ceiling effect and we are excluding the worst performance, the, the person in worst conditions that are providing the issue of the floor effect. And working with this model, taking into account a, a, an organ with the DEXA and the assessment of uh, skeletal muscle and working with an instrument as the SPDB also provided us the possibility of doing a parallelism with other clinical conditions. Here there is uh, the, the definition that we proposed is associated with another age-related condition, as the COPD, and I mean, if in the COPD we have spirometry, we have DEXA for measuring the biological substrate of this condition. If in COPD we have different symptoms, again, thanks to the SPVP, we can have measure of clinical manifestations. And again, function is measurable with a standardized, repeatable, and easy to implement in the clinical setting test. Uh, just to understand also what, what is the, the aim of uh, sprint. Sprint is really filling the first step in the development of a clinical condition. When we have a person with diabetes, we do not start with medication as soon as we found the high uh, concentration of glycated hemoglobin. We start with lifestyle modifications. If those are not sufficient, we start proposing first and second level medications. Sprint, with an intervention that will be described in the following presentation, is trying to evaluate the benefits of a lifestyle modification of a condition of, of, of risk. Among the persons that will benefit from, from, from the intervention, there, there might be also non-responders. Those non-responders may ideally be the candidate for second, uh, a second approach with medications, with individuals with biostatin and, uh, and, and so on. So we are, in sprint, we are really feeling hopefully the first step of the pyramid, paving the way for the development of subsequent interventions. So, for uh, in conclusion, both free and sarcopenia are clinical conditions that expose the, the older persons at risk of negative uh, related events. So, uh, it, it is important to develop interventions uh, targeting them. But for doing this, we need also to accomplish some regulatory uh, tasks, uh, among which there is also the definition of a 
valid and replicable standardized operationalization of the condition. And we hope that in sprint, the theory that I've shown here will be translated into a successful trial. Thank you.